Hi, this is Maggie. In this video, we're going to talk about some more of the structural relationships between objects that facilitate collaboration among objects to accomplish work in an object-oriented system. We're going to start by talking about the composition association, sometimes referred to as a has-part relationship between objects. In a composition association, one object or one or more objects are components of another object. So think of this as a part-whole relationship. An example that is frequently given is one of a car. The tires and windshield and engine are all parts of a single car. The composition association is drawn with a diamond at the end of the composed or source object and a line to the object which is a part of the composed object or target object. In this example, I'm considering a publication, such as a publication that fact checks claims made by public figures, and a particular claim. You can imagine that the publication consists of many of these fact-checked claims, so we show a cardinality of one on the publication side, and a cardinality of many, shown as an asterisk, on the claim side. The publication object might not have a reference to each individual claim. For example, you can imagine that they're stored in a list, a dictionary, or a database of some kind. And the claim objects may or may not have a reference to the publication. In a composition association, we can make an assumption about the lifetime of the target object. Its life cycle begins and ends within the lifetime of the source object. It might not begin when the source object begins, but it does not exist before the source object comes into existence, and it does not exist after the source object is destroyed. So the claim objects are part of the publication object and live and die within its lifespan. Another interesting association is an association class. An association class is a class in itself. It generally has fields and methods, but it also defines an association between two other classes that are otherwise independent. The example I have here is one of a book review, and the context is a library summer reading program. Imagine that in the summer reading program, the readers can write reviews of the books that they read. The review in and of itself is an object because it contains data such as the text of the review and perhaps a rating, maybe other information depending on what we want to include. And the readers and the books are also objects in and of themselves. A reader might include a name, a library card number, and an age or grade level maybe, and a book would include at least a title and author, but possibly genre, publication date, number of pages, etc. So each of these objects has their own data to keep track of, but the review can have a reference to the reviewer, which is an object of class reader, and the book that was read, an object of class book. We draw the association class relationship as a line between the two classes being associated, in this case the book class and the reader class, and then a dashed line in the middle of that leading to the association class, in this case the review class. We show the names of the two classes being associated as referenced in the association class. Note that book and reader do not have references to each other. It doesn't make sense for them to have those references. People read many different books, and books are read by many different readers. But a review uniquely links a book and a reader by the review that the reader creates. And there can be many books and many readers associated by reviews. Each book might have many reviewers, and each reviewer might review many books, so we show a many-many cardinality with the asterisk. I have an implementation of this system. This implementation doesn't have any program built around it. In other words, we're not maintaining a database of readers and books, or providing an interface allowing readers to submit their reviews, or allowing readers to search for reviews based on book or reader. But this implementation shows how the association class relationship is implemented, and there is a simple client class to create a few books, reviews, and readers to show how the system might work. So first, looking at class diagrams for the three classes involved, we have book which has two fields, both private, author and title. Again, we can imagine many more fields, but we're keeping this simple because we're focusing on the structural associations between objects. Book has an initializer, which takes parameters to initialize both fields and an str method, which will be invoked when the book object is cast to a string, for example, in the print method. The reader class is also pretty bare bones. We have a name field and a card number field, both private, and then an initializer taking parameters to initialize both fields and an str method, the same as book. 
Now, the review class is really the interesting class because it's the association class. So the review class has the two fields, which are the data associated with the review, the rating, an integer, and review, a string, both private. And then it has the two references to the classes that are associated by the review, a reference to the book object and a reference to the reader object called reviewer and book. These are also private. Review has an initializer taking parameters to initialize all fields, which means that the reader and the book exist and are passed into this initializer. This makes sense, remember, because an association class is defining a relationship between two objects that don't otherwise have a relationship. They exist independent of the review object being instantiated. And review also has an str method. And the code for each of these classes is pretty straightforward. Let's take a quick look, and then we'll look at the client program that creates these objects. These classes are all in the same file, together with the client program, to keep this simple. Here's the book class and an annotation of the two fields, title and author, and the initializer, which initializes the two fields to the values passed as parameters. Here's the str method, which takes the fields of the object and creates a string suitable for output. The string shows the title, and then the word by, and the author. So here's the reader class, and it's very similar to book. We annotate the two fields, the initializer initializes the fields from the values passed as parameters, and the str method creates a string, which is the name of the reader and the card number separated by a comma. Now the review class is the same. Four fields are annotated. Two of them are references to objects of class book and reader, and they're all initialized from parameters, no mystery there and in the str method we cast the objects to a string which will invoke their str methods in order to append them into the output string for the review object. So the review object string will look like review of and then the book cast to a string and then by and then the reviewer cast to a string and then the two fields that are unique to the review, the review and the rating. Let's look at the program that gives these classes a little test run, the client program. So that's down here in the main function, and we annotate one book called book, and two readers called reader Tim and reader John, and we annotate two reviews called review Tim and review John. Now we instantiate the book object and the two reader objects, by passing in some parameters. So we have these objects. We can imagine, if this is part of a much larger library summer reading program system, that these reader objects are logging minutes read and there are thousands of book objects that are getting checked in and out of the library. We're interested here in showing examples of review objects. So we create our first review object. And remember, this is an example of an association class object. This object links two other objects and also includes some data of its own. So we create review Tim and we pass into the initializer our references to reader Tim and our reference to the one book we have, and then data for the unique fields of a review object, the rating, which is five, and the review, which says, loved it, I'll never read only forward again. And then we create another review object referenced by review John, and we pass in reader John and our same book, and then the rating, which is one, and the review, which is book was twice as long as I expected. We then send each object to the print function, which invokes their str methods. Remember that within each review object, we also cast the reader and the book objects to strings, invoking their str methods. So the review object associating the reader and the book sends them each implicitly the str message in response to receiving an str message itself. This client program is very simple and unrealistic. It simply exercises construction and printing of objects. A more interesting system would maybe read reader and book data from a file and then allow the user to create review objects by choosing a reader and a book from a list and then adding the rating and review text and storing it all. It might allow the user to read all reviews for a particular book. To practice with these concepts, try implementing a simple version of the publication and claim classes. 
such as the one for the library reading program. To practice with the association class, add books, readers, and reviews to the library reading program system, and then add fields to the classes, and rewrite the system so that it still works. When you can comfortably program and modify these systems, you're ready to move on.